Try out the Vibersonic by Beyond Sleep. It's my mattress. I've been using it for over a year. There's six speakers built into this thing. So I'm watching movies differently. I'm listening to my podcasts and music differently. Whoa. Playing video games. And when I do it, I play GTA. My bed shakes. It's pretty sick. That's crazy. If you want to try it out, there's a link in the description below. Or you can just grab the, the QR code. It's on the screen. I'm telling you, it's a new way to sleep. Memory foam knows your body. Plus, the adjustable base will align your spine. And again... There's speakers into it, so it connects to your existing sound system, or you could build a sound system off of your mattress. Again, make the most out of your mattress, and try out the Vibersonic and let me know how you sleep. Uh, hi, beautiful human. This is Zach. I'm Dan. Wait, this is Zach. I'm Dan? What? Yeah, well, whatever, you know? <laughs> oh, We're starting shit. off strong. See, we can let you down. <laughs> starting off strong. <laughs> <laughs> that's Dan. I'm Alex. And that's Alex Samson. Hey, hey, What's hey. up? Hey, 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 hey. 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 Freestyle. Hey. <laughs> wow. Thanks for being here. I mean, Thank you for having me. Are you saying A because I'm Canadian? Uh, you know, I've it, it could apply to Canadians. <laughs> and I do sound Canadian when I say it, but genuinely I picked up saying A all the time. Really? Because my boyfriend is Australian. Re Did they say that down there? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. They like do like it different, it, but it sounds different than your A. Okay. Because their vowels and everything is yeah. different. But when I say it, because I'm, I sound more like a Canadian as I come from America, which is, you know, pretty not too far. Uh, no, yeah, no, just right below. Yeah, I sound like you. Do you, do you get confused for a Canadian? Uh, in Australia, yes, when I would do. <laughs> really? Totally. There's also a lot of Canadians in Australia. They have a really tight relationship as really? countries. That's and, amazing. Yeah, they uh, take like students back and forth and they do stuff, yeah. Oh, cool. And they, yeah, they work and they're, they're among the people of Australia. Yeah, it's just because they're both happy people who don't cause problems. Yeah, Canadians I feel like Australia nice. and Canada are kind of like, Pretty chill mm -hmm. when it comes to the rest of the world. Well, I mean, to be <laughs> no fair, offense. that is that is true. That yeah. they're yeah, compared yeah. to everybody, totally. Australians they were a penal colony, so they were used as a prison at one point. You know, they took oh, wow. all the criminals. Uh, Canada, not so much. <laughs> not so much. Yeah. Uh, yes, no. <laughs> so, what's the deal here? When did you start making music? Genuinely, did it start for you as covers, or did you explore instruments? Did you explore writing originals? That's a, that's a great question. It did it did start with covers, and it did start with singing. Um, professionally, I started in 2019 uh, when I was 15 years old. Um, but I've been singing my whole life, and as cliche as it sounds, it's always been a thing in, in my life and in my in my family. Uh, not a day went by growing up, and still to this day when I'm at home where music isn't just playing being played throughout my house. But uh, I started with covers, uh, and then, you know, professionally I started in 2015 writing my own stuff. How do you realize that you have the ability to sing? Um, so <laughs> I, I really didn't, um, you know, my, my dad especially will fight me on this, but I was not always, I guess you could say good. Um, I, <laughs> um, uh, no, dude. Um, I mean, I think a lot of it came from practice, um, and singing and figuring out how to sing preferably. I don't think anyone's really like born with it. Um, but no, I mean, I it kinda, is a muscle, right? Like you can it, train it is. It I think stuff everybody it? In my personal opinion, I think everybody can sing if they really try, mm. and they try for it. Interesting. Personally, do you, can you sing? Uh, you know, I don't know. But Dan, would you I, like to try? Dan? No, I wouldn't. I don't think I can do it. I think I suck. Oh, that's not <laughs> oh, true. I think okay. there's in moments, well, not with that attitude. Well, no, exactly. you know what? There are times in my car where I think I think I hit that note. See, oh, think, yeah, yeah, no, exactly, exactly. Oh. I, I'm I can't dance. I think I'm a horrible dancer. But I did my first dance the other day, and I was kind of like, wait. Maybe I can do this. Oh. Yeah. Are you, like, going to add choreography to what you do? What are you thinking? Not anytime soon. <laughs> not the way not with my blocky shoulders. Yeah, no. we've seen <laughs> those TikToks. Not great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. And do you not like the dancing on the TikTok? Um, so, I mean, personally for me, uh, when it comes to social media and TikTok, I've always tried to keep it strictly music, at least when I was starting out more, because I, I wanted to be, you know, I mean, this is just a personal thing for me. I wanted to be seen as an artist and not uh, a TikToker. Mm -hmm. um, if that makes sense. Um, so I would kind of, you know, stray away from doing certain trends that were popping off at the time. And it, it would it would be a risk because um, knowing I could get a lot of views if I did that, in my personal opinion, would not wreck my image, but it would help it would help me not be taken seriously, mm -hmm. if that makes more sense. So I kind of always tried to make everything about music the best I could. And if there was a big trend going on, I would somehow incorporate music into it. Or I would like, if a song was going viral, I would sing that song instead of just doing a video to the song. 
How much of the strategy of what you've been doing from the very beginning is up to you? Do you rely on anybody else? Do you work with anybody else? Um, yes, uh, I do. I mean, recently I just signed with Warner uh, out here in L.A. Congratulations. Um, thank you. What, are thank they you. helping you on TikTok strategy? Oh, no. So I, I have a viral team that, you know, we come up with ideas. But um, as far as posting goes, it's really just uh, I'm kind of in control. And I come up with the ideas. Um, but uh, they're amazing. And we all kind of put our heads together on what we can come up for maybe a trend or we could do whatever. But it's usually just me kind of posting, hoping something goes viral. Has it always been that way? Or yeah. have you been able to figure out or identify pattern? So with TikTok, it's very confusing. And, oh, dude, um, usually you can kind of tell what video will do better than another one, but it's also such a guessing game when it comes to the algorithm and everything. You never know 100% what's going to take off, mm -hmm. but you can usually kind of tell, you know, if a video has good lighting, it's more likely to do better than a video with bad lighting and stuff like that. But as far as actual content goes, you never know. And I've learned to like not stress myself out about it because I used to spend hours making videos and then I would get so upset when they wouldn't perform well, but it's not my fault. Cause you know, you spend two hours making a video and then it performs poorly. And then you spend 10 seconds making one and then it goes viral. Why do you think a record label signed you? That's a deep question. That's, that's, that's uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> put me on the spot there. Um, I don't know. I mean, I've worked very, very hard, um, since I really started and, you know, I, uh, first met with Warner and they liked the songs that I was doing and, uh, we kind of connected and we just partnered together, I guess. How did you know you were ready for it, right? Because that's also a thing as an artist, right? Before, like, to it is a huge step. It is. It is a huge step. It's my first. It's my first record label, and it's my first major, major thing. Well, it's a major um, label. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I mean, Dua Lipa's I, there. What'd you say? Dua Lipa's over there. Dua Lipa is over there. Yeah, we. Uh, they have a lot of really, really big artists, and for that's me personally, it. I've been. You know, doing it for so long, and obviously my dream is to be as big as possible, uh, hopefully one day. Um, and I think it was just a step that I have always wanted. Like, obviously, it was, it's was it been a dream of mine to sign with a label my entire life. Um, and I felt that after doing it pretty much independently for four years, it was at a point where I felt like I was ready to do that. How many, do you write all your songs yourself? Uh, most of them, yes. Uh, nowadays, in the past few years, I have been a part of writing everything. When I first started out, I would get sent songs, and I still get sent songs today. I am not opposed to doing a song that I didn't write, um, but I tend to write all my songs, yeah. What you, What is your process like? Are you always with somebody else? Do you do anything alone? Um, I mainly come up with a lot of my ideas by myself. I could scroll on my phone, on my notes app, for probably an hour straight, just showing you ideas. Um... I, I'll come up with an idea and then I'll bring it into a session. Uh, what I like to do is be prepared. When I go into a writing session, I'll come in with an idea and I'll come in with a reference. Like I'm feeling this way today. If I want to write a ballad, I'll come up with like a ballad that I'd like to write sonically that'll sound whatever. Uh, and I'll come up with an idea. I have a few ideas in my notes. And if, uh, for example, if I'm going in with a writer and they aren't vibing with the idea I have, I have 50 more that I can give, but I like to be prepared. I'm curious, what does it mean to be a big mainstream artist to an artist like you? I mean, you're super young, right? So like- 19. Yeah, Turned so- 20 in 10 days, actually. That, mm. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but like, what, when you're aspiring to, like, what is it, what, what, how do you define like what a big mainstream artist is? Like when you, when you sign with a major label, you have intentions and dreams in mind, right? Mm. Like, but what does that look and feel like? What, what, how, what is it? What does a mainstream artist feel like to me? Yeah, like how does it, how do you see somebody who's really popular? Like what what are the, what comes with that? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So for me, um, you know, a lot of my friends, you know, growing up, uh, and because I was still in school when I started social media, I started TikTok in 2018, and I, you know, gained a little bit of a following, and I didn't hide it. You know, my friends knew, everyone at my school knew, um, and all my friends would always joke around with me and be like, "Oh, you're famous." I don't consider myself famous at all. You know, I personally, for me. I'm very happy with where I am. I could be at this stage for the rest of my life and I could be content. I could be happy. Um, but as far as, yes, I'm with a major label. I don't think I'm a major artist because uh, I'm not at that stage, in my opinion, yet. You know, other people may disagree with me. You're with a major label. You know, your songs are performing really well. But for me, like, until I'm selling out, like, a stadium, I'm, I don't think I'm a major artist hmm. yet. Why do you think people followed you? Um... So originally, when I started uh, TikTok, I started it as a joke. 
because uh, back in 2018 when Musical.ly switched to TikTok, I think that's kind of what everybody was mm -hmm. doing at the time. So I started it, and I was just making really, and you can't even call it comedy, dude. I was just making really, really <laughs> bad videos that I thought were funny. Um, and I, I posted my first video. It's still up to this day. I pray no one finds it. Um, it's on a different account. It's um, whatever. And I, like, spiked my hair up because I had short hair at the time. And, like, everyone on Musical.ly had, like, that haircut where it was, like, Justin Bieber. Um, so I did that. And it got, like, 10,000 views in the first day. And I said, oh, crap. This is cool. And, you know, then once I started singing, then I actually gained the following. And, you know, people started to follow me over on other social media platforms. And um, I think people followed me for my singing and what's, the covers that I posted. What's the hardest thing that's come with it all? Ooh, that's a great question with social media and everything. Yeah, I mean, there's like, a, I mean, obviously there's good and bad with everything. Mm. I think um, the pressure uh, to do well and succeed is probably the hardest thing that comes with it. Um, when I, you know, make music, I make music that I like to listen to personally. When, when I'm listening to music, I want to make music that I would like to listen to. So ultimately when I put it out, I try my best to make as many videos as possible and promote it the best I can. I mean, I was just home for a month in December, um, downtime, you know, holidays, everybody's kind of, you know, doing their own thing. And then January we come back, my EP, um, uh, which, uh, you know, on the 19th it comes out. I think uh, it's out now. I mean, right now it's not out, but where's the, where's the camera? Where do uh, I no, it's, it's coming out tonight. It's, it's coming out. It's coming yeah. out soon. Like this ne next week it'll be out. Um, and I took all of December to make promo videos um, and I edited them all so I can have time because I'm not going to have time while I'm here to mm. make some because I'm in writing sessions, uh, doing some interviews to promote the EP. Like literally working on the next stuff too. Yeah. And also working on, you know, the next project and a bunch of other stuff. So I took December to just make a bunch of videos to just shove on social media because you never know what does well. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of videos to post. But I think the pressure to succeed, especially now, you know, that I'm with Warner, I obviously, you know, I want to, I want to impress them. I want to do well by them because, you know, they believe in me and they put a lot of faith in me. And I think the pressure to succeed is probably the hardest thing that comes with it. By the way, you can listen to Blurry Vision. It's waiting for you. you All the songs that are out and then will be out are That's on true. Amazon Music. Click the link in the description below. Do it. Yeah. Do it. What are you thinking? Why Blurry Vision for the debut EP? See, that's a great question. So the original title for the EP, we went through a few. Um, and the original title was Emotion Sickness. Um, it was a line mm. from my song, Want You, because uh, I get emotion sickness from back and forth with you. And I thought, that's the coolest lyric ever. I'm going to make that the EP title. And then another artist put an EP out called Emotion Sickness. And I was like, oh, damn it. <laughs> Who did that? Um, I think it was Fifi Dobson. She's another Canadian uh, singer. She's amazing. Uh, and I was just like, dang it, Fifi. <laughs> took my EP title. But uh, Blurry Vision is a lyric from my song, Blind, which uh, is actually my first moment where I kind of had a viral moment on TikTok. Um, and it's a, a line from the song that says, you love with blurry vision, which I think captures the whole EP as a whole with the story that we wanted to tell. And I got it tattooed right here, blurry nice. vision for my first, uh, project. Cause this is my debut project. And, uh, which also puts more project, uh, more pressure to do well because I got a tattoo of it. <laughs> <laughs> first project flops. I have a tattoo. Damn it. Yeah. Is it all ripped from your reality or are you writing from imagination? Other people's stories? I yeah. personally, uh, I like writing about. All, all kinds of things, you know, other people's stories, you know, uh, I'll write if one of my friends is going through something, I'll, you know, take inspiration from that, write about that. But a lot of the EP is just stuff that I went through, you know, like relationships and uh, everything. Was it Want You that you said wasn't from your reality? Isn't there one song you said that was written, Yeah, wasn't it written about anybody in specific? Yeah, Want You. That's, oh. that's Want You. Yeah. Why, 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 what, like, what, how'd you come up with that if it's not written about anyone? Yeah, so we, we were in the studio. I was in Toronto. Uh, when I wrote that song uh, with my good buddy Nathan and a few others, and he kind of came up with the the top line that I want you done taking out that, and we kind of just wrote a fun song just to write a fun song. I had no, I wasn't going through that at the time, and I I hadn't gone through something like that, so I was just kind of. I took some inspiration from something in the past, but as far as the entire song goes, that's kind of the first song I've written that was just kind of like having a fun song. But I tend to write my songs about stuff that I go through and how I'm feeling at the moment. Do you read comments? Yes. I respond to as many comments as I can in the first hour after I post everything. Is there a comment that's the hardest to read? Um, that's a good question. Uh, no, I don't think so. You know, I'll, I'll post on social media, for example, Instagram, and 
TikTok and I like to respond to as many people as I can because uh, for, for a variety of reasons, you know, they, they like it and I like engaging with my fan base and it makes them feel more connected to me. Um, and uh, it also helps the post do good because <laughs> it's engagement. So if there's 100 comments and I reply to all of them, there's 200. And it, lo it looks good. It, it, it's, a, it's a plus all around because, you know, they like it when I engage with them. I like engaging <sighs> with them. Helps the post do well. Do you delete um, any? Yeah. No. I, I don't really delete any, no. There, there are some that, you know, I'll respond... Uh, uh, and then like, I won't reply to some of them cause I don't know how to reply to some of them. Obviously, like if I'm and it's also some are a lot, you know, I'll respond to, uh, certain ones and sometimes like, cause my fans, like they know that I respond. So like, they'll try and be as early as possible to the post. Uh, so they, I can respond to them and they're just like spam comments. I love it. I think it's amazing, but I, I can't reply to every single comment that they spam. So sometimes I'll reply to a few from one person and then just skip the rest of their comments and then reply to, you know. As many different people as I can. Interesting. Yeah. There are a lot of comments on there. There are. Yeah. Your content touches a lot of people's feeds. I, I hope so. That's that's the goal. <laughs> yeah. And everybody has an opinion and a thought, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I mean, the, the best part about music, in my opinion, is, you know, if someone comments on my... I guess I, guess I can answer your question if there's, like, any the hard comments to read or something, but I guess if someone comments, like, oh, like, for example, this song sucks... It's just someone's opinion, and I'm, I, I like to respond. I probably shouldn't do this, but I like to just want to be like, yeah, damn, fuck this guy. You know what I mean? Like, this guy <laughs> sucks at music. Um, and, then they'll, and then a lot of the time they'll respond and be like, sorry, bro, that was my sister. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. But I, I just personally like engaging with uh, everyone that, because, I mean, I wouldn't be here without them. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of artists say, like, they wouldn't be here with their fans, and it's, it's true. So I like to show them that. By the way, Blurry Vision waiting for you on Amazon Music. That's Click true. away. Do it. Play Pretend, that came out years ago, right? Yes. Why is it on the EP? Um, that is a great question. Uh, so Play Pretend is my best performing song at the moment. Okay. Um, and I think it's sitting at 16 million on Spotify. Nice. And uh, we, I mean, the label loves it. Warner loves the song. I love the song. And we kind of just were like, why not? We kind of just put it on there. It, it fit. It kind of fit the story of the EP. So we felt like, why not? The story of that one is you're in love with your best, you were in love with your best friend? That story of the EP, bro, <laughs> I can be here for years. Um, but that's what you want, though, in life. You yeah. want to be in love with your best friend. Yeah, I mean, the story of the EP, you know, I felt that you love with blurry vision captures the entire thing. Because, you know, the story of the EP is, like, a love that, you know, was, it's just all kinds of things. You know, so back and forth. Um, it's amazing at points. It's basically just love in general. Like, love is amazing. Sometimes it's confusing. Sometimes it's heartbreaking. And sometimes it's just blurry all around you don't know what's going on which i felt you love with blurry vision kind of captured the whole thing do you, you tell your best friend that you're in love with her play pretend wise for them jesus oh <laughs> sorry oh, fuck. um i wrote so i wrote play pretend in <laughs> 2020 um them sorry oh uh, good i wrote i wrote play pretend in 2020 uh about uh my best friend at the time and i and i did tell her yes she kind of found out i i wasn't making it i wasn't trying to hide it you know um, and she just kind of was like, no, 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 I don't feel that way about you. And I was like, oh, okay. And then, uh, you know, I wrote the song about it. And uh, <laughs> we're, st we're, st we're still, <laughs> yeah. <it> was <laughs> Damn, that hurts. Huh? Yeah, no, it sucks. Um, but uh, it's really funny. I think if anything, like, we're still, we're still really good friends to this day. And it kind of it made a cl it made us closer. And we laugh about it to this day because, like, no one knows who it's about. And that's not about to happen here. <laughs> so, <laughs> just, shut that one down. In case you were going to there. there. Like, yeah. Why'd you break up? <laughs> we weren't together. Are you talking about EP sense? No, no, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. Play pretend we weren't together. I was just like falling for my best friend and she shut that down real quick. Hey, remember you went through that too? Yeah, I did. Why'd yeah. you have to bring that up, dude? Maybe he's sensitive. Well, yeah, but I knew no, that no, you, but you should understand something. I believe in love. Well, now I'm in love with my best friend and That's they're amazing. also with me and like they're in love back. So it's awesome. That's the best thing to have. Yeah, you want to be in love with your best friend. Of think course about you do. it. Like I think you, you should, spend yeah. the most fucking time with this person. Exactly. You should be, whoever you're with should be your best friend. Yes. That's what I, I mean. I, I personally think that. Totally. Yeah. And by the way, I am in love with my best friend and proud of it. So yeah, rock on. That's amazing. Rock I on. I don't think this is rock on. This is I love you. <laughs> what, did you what did you do? Uh, this is rock on. Th isn't it like, oh, uh, isn't it horror. like this? Isn't this rock on? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I did yeah. a this. This is I love you. This in sign language? I it's believe so. <laughs> what it, I'm gonna you know what oh, on this? my what did I just say in sign language by doing Oh okay. On Thank my God. list of things to do this year, I'm gonna learn sign language. Dude, I want to. American sign language. That's ASL. awesome. Why is that? Well 
I mean, I want to learn. I just want to be able to communicate that way. Is there a difference? But sign then I'm languages? also afraid of losing my hands, and then my whole skill is rendered useless. <laughs> Wait, is there like different <laughs> sign language? You said American sign language. Yeah, I think really? so. ASL yeah. is one version of sign language. Is there I'm sign language with, sweet with accents? So like, Jordan, can you Google uh, <laughs> ASL? <laughs> There's different. I think so. Like, oh, there I, is different sign languages yeah. around the world. What's like? What's the difference? Is do you like sign language in Australian? There's well, three hundred different breaking sign news, languages. Brother, in Australia, they speak English. No, no, I know but that. I just meant the accent. Yeah, like, is there slang? like an accent? With, with um, <laughs> I believe there's probably vernacular that's, that's like, so cool. Like, that's like so cool. Native to the region that people there understand that you may need a, yeah. a, a chance to translate. But there is like you do speak Australian technically because the vowels are different and the vowels have different sounds. That's so cool. Yeah, well, there's been an epidemic of people or children sp speaking with Australian accents in America because wow. of Bluey, but for years in Australia, there's been an, an epidemic of children speaking with American accents oh, because wow. they consume a lot of, like, American culture. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That makes sense. I don't know. I've become a resident expert in Australia, apparently. You go to Australia for two weeks and you're automatically <laughs> well, an expert in the I was place. there for three. Okay. <laughs> three. It's way different. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. It's <laughs> different at three, brother. Like, at three, I'm getting a passport. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's they're, me, they're adding me to the national health care system. Yeah, well, That's probably, amazing. Probably cheaper. The whole thing is cheaper. Really? You kidding me? You guys got good health care in Canada? Great health care. <laughs> we got great health Why are we talking about this? Yeah, we have great health care in Canada. Free Why healthcare. not? This is the conversation we should be having. Yeah, come on. I think free health care should just be a thing. Yes. It everywhere. Makes sense. Why not? By the way, I can make the case that the Canadian government's helped you out a lot as an artist. Correct? Oh, I mean... CanCon. What's CanCon? Oh, it's... Well, first of all, your label's probably doing it, but like... Uh, because you're a Canadian artist, you're eligible for tax uh, oh, incentives, yeah. and they'll help you fund music videos and studio time. You you definitely do all this. They probably do. I probably just have no idea. Well, it, well it's an amazing <laughs> thing. That's awesome. I'm glad. I hope I have that. We should all call on Maxwell Alejandro Frost to do this here in America, supporting the arts from an early stage in education, but also as it relates to support, supporting <sighs> artists as they live. Th don't you snore. Sorry. Because at the end of the day, one of our most valuable things that – in America, what one of our most valuable assets, one, are, are people, first and foremost. But second, a cultural export matters, right? Like Re for yeah. Canada, they love the cultural export. So much of Canada is learned from Justin Bieber, Carly Rae Jemsen. I mean, dude, the Drake. weekend, Drake, we Drake. Mariana's yeah. fucking trench. I, I love can, Mariana's trench. Tate McRae. Dude, like the list I mean, like on Jim Carrey. He's an actor. Sean but, Mendez. Sean Mendez. Yeah. Well, um, Cara. Isn't the weekend Canadian? Yes. Yeah, I said him. But yeah. Oh, you did. Oh, okay. Tell me. <laughs> he came up. He was like top of the list, kind of. Oh, you know yeah. I mean? Oh, my bad. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> no, but genuinely. Johnny like, what, Orlando. What, yeah. Johnny Orlando. Orlando, my dog. But what that ends up doing is really inspiring and helping out future generations of artists because it, it tells people that they can, if they want to, That's amazing. explore something. I mean, Great. it is true. And, and a lot of that, like, by the way, you got started in a talent show. So, I so, did. so much begins at school and mm. so much of the arts begins at school and yeah Canada gets it we should do something similar here in America Maxwell yeah. Alejandro Frost we call on you I vote free healthcare everywhere uh, yeah that's mm -hmm. a whole other conversation we're back to the healthcare now <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's yeah I, trust <laughs> me you know taking care of people's health allows a, a country to function at its maximum efficiency and, and, and maximum return right like investing in our people is like the bare minimum <laughs> basic because our greatest asset are our people so that's true it Very starts with health, people. dude. T t talk us through this uh, talent show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a good transition. Back on the train. Uh, yeah, yeah, Back yeah. in the topic I'm over of government talk. No, you're yeah, a really um, good host. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the talent show was at my in my middle school. The very first time I, I sang on a stage, if you want to, you know, call it that. Um, I originally, uh, not to go on like a completely different topic again. The year before I entered the talent show, and before I could do it, I broke my arms. So what? I, yeah, just I was playing tag, <laughs> believe it or not, and I broke my arms, so I couldn't do the talent show because <laughs> I was in the hospital sitting like this. You had cast Wait. on both arms. Yeah, it was bad, <laughs> dude. Usually, tag is not something violent like that. Did you fall off or something? Yeah, I did. So I was getting very briefly. I was getting chased because <laughs> I was running away from the person who was it, and then I climbed up on this like truck, and you know I was like ten years old, so this truck was huge. So I'm on, on the back of this truck, and he comes up. And he doesn't know where to go now. I'm like, I'll jump. He's no, you won't. I jumped. And I landed like this. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Yeah, <laughs> I stood up. It was this was like here. Oh, it was bad. And so oh, I, I, I actually do that. I can't. Ooh. Oh, it was, it was actually this one. So I have a scar right here. If you can see it, because I had to put pins in my arm and then pull no. it out. So the next year I went into the talent show. Damn. 
And uh, it was great. I sang, you know, I'm a huge Owl City fan. Um, you know, Fireflies. Uh -huh. Of course. Um, and I they sang. may be Canadian. <laughs> you never, you may be Canadian. Everyone's a little Canadian. <laughs> Everyone's a little Canadian. <laughs> um, but no, I loved it. Obviously, you know, I was 10 years old and you can kind of assume everyone's going to clap for a 10 year old, even though I, I mean, I personally thought I was not good at all. I thought I was horrendous. The video is out there somewhere on the internet, but, uh, I loved the feeling. You know, um, I loved the feeling of get, going on stage, singing, and then at the end of everyone applauding, I loved it. It's interesting. I wonder, wonder if it would have been the same if you didn't break your arms. That's, that's, you know what? That's a great question. Mm. Who knows? Al City's from Minnesota, close enough. Close enough. <laughs> We're like, I'm like a six-hour drive from Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> it does not, does not, does not <laughs> work out enough. that way. The math does not work <laughs> out. I go to Minnesota to fly to L.A., so. Do you really? Yeah. Oh, so a, it is close, eh? Yeah, I have, I have a treacherous uh, A. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, but you know what? No, uh, That's really good. Thank you. I mean, it's almost like good. I'm Canadian. Yeah. Uh, we call, so basically, I live in a very, very small town with uh, under 3,000 people. Where? Uh, Atacokan is called in uh, <gasps> northwestern Ontario, Canada. Wow. I've never heard of it. And I was on the radio in Canada for a long time, like Ottawa and Grand Prairie, yeah. Alberta. I'm very far away. Wow. Yeah. What's I'm, like your nearest big city? Thunder Bay. If you've heard of Thunder Bay. No. Uh, it's it's also pretty small, 150,000. Wow. Um, but so my journey to L.A. from Atacokan is we have a two-hour drive to the border in International Falls. Uh, we go there in Minnesota. And then I have a flight from there to Minneapolis uh, and then from Minneapolis to L.A. Wow. How long does that whole thing take? About eight hours, nine, <sighs> depending on the layovers. Um, wow. It's, it's a 45-minute flight from International usually to uh, Minneapolis and then two hour layover and then it's like a four and a half hour flight to LA. Damn. I've gotten used to it though, so it's it's cool. So all your family's back there? Yes, they are. Back uh, in Canada. Mm. In that tiny city. In that tiny city. You can call it village. Like yeah. I don't know, dude. We yeah. have one gas station there. That's like, crazy. Dude, if I told you what we have and what we didn't, you'd, you'd it's crazy. Yeah. At what age did you start thinking, okay, I'm in a small little town of three thousand people, but I can become a bigger star and get out of here and become something in like Los Angeles. I think it was, yeah. You know, I mean, and you know, it's always been a dream of mine. I've always wanted to be a singer. Obviously every kid like, I want to be an astronaut. I wanted to be an astronaut <laughs> when I was little, but I think singing, you know, I didn't, I didn't really know how I was going to do it, but I always felt like I'd find a way mm -hmm. somehow. And, you know, I started TikTok in 2018. Uh, and then 2019, I went out to LA and started, uh, doing my thing and it's kind of just been go, go, go ever since. That's wild. I know, coming from a place that's that small, everyone. So everyone, everyone knows each other there. It's you can. Yeah, I mean, you have to. Wait, yeah. three thousand people. My high 2, school was twenty. My high, I graduate. My high school my, was over three thousand people. There's probably more people on the block than in my town. That's crazy. <laughs> Outside, yeah, it's 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 crazy. So we don't have like name things, and I'll tell you that we don't have them. I mean everything. Target? <laughs> no. No, you have nothing. <laughs> no, we don't have Target. We don't have Starbucks. We don't have McDonald's. Don't have a Walmart. We have one gas station. The fact that you don't even have a McDonald's is mm -mm. crazy. So you know Tim Hortons? Yeah, is do you have a Tim Canadian Hortons? Thing? No. We have a Robbins, which is so Tim Hortons is like what Canadian Can Canada Starbucks, and Robbins is like like the I don't know if you call it like a ripoff Tim Hortons, but it's like a very smaller version of Tim Hortons. And we don't we have that and that closed recently. What? <laughs> what closed you, down? Why don't you tell us what you do have? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> well, that's a great question. We that. have surprise, surprise, a hockey rink. Of oh. course. Uh, surprise. <laughs> uh, we have two pizza places that are right next to each other on Main Street. Interesting. Don't know who did that. Interesting but, competition. Yeah. But, uh, no. not, but not like Domino's or Pizza Hut. No, they're like we it's called uh Papa Joe's, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then uh Outdoorsman. And Pizza Tut. <laughs> pizza time. Yeah, we have two pizza. We have two pizza places. We have um, one main hotel and restaurant. Like when you pull into town, it's the first thing you see. Uh, and we have one gas station. We have one grocery. We do have a grocery store. Um, that's okay. good. <laughs> that's great. We have a few corner stores on Main Street, and we have uh, a swimming pool and a baseball diamond. Yeah, I just don't know if anyone makes money serving to just three thousand people. Um, there, there, there is work around. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Not as much as it was in the in the eighties. Like when I was growing up, growing up, uh, the town was just getting through so my town um my parents are gonna kill me if i get this wrong but uh iron was like really uh need back then in my town we have this mine and you know you can get a lot of iron there like we used to have eight thousand people in the town and then it dried and had, up yeah and then and then uh the need for it wasn't there anymore so you know people moved away and you know we used to have a movie theater we used to have a bowling alley we used to have a bunch of stuff and you know people moving away less people using it so the, that closed down everything started to close down 
Uh, and yeah, because the need for iron went away. There were so many people in town that were just living there for that, and wow. they just moved away to find other jobs. It's really interesting how, you know, yeah. uh, genuinely communities are built around things like that, right? Like resources oh, no, that are needed. And I mean, so much, so much comes from jobs and, but also like, there is also something special about a city, a, a village, a town of 3000 yeah, people. It could literally be in like a Netflix horror movie. It's terrifying at night. You get like, there's no one on main street. Like you have fog. It's terrifying. Like, is there a police station? Yeah, we have a police station. We do. And we have like a few jail cells. We have a hospital. We do have a hospital. I could have, I should, I could have said that. We have a hospital. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, that's pretty cool. But when I broke my arm, yeah, it's great to have one of those. Uh, but when I broke my arms, uh, because it was so bad, we had to drive to Thunder Bay, which is a two hour drive. What? Um, yeah. So the doctor in town put like a cast on my broken arm without fixing it. <gasps> yeah, it was bad. And so because I was in shock when it happened, I didn't really feel it. The adrenaline. And I was just kind of like, hey, guys, I think my arm's broken. So we went to the hospital. Oh. I know. That's how I felt. We went to the hospital. They put the thing on me and then they ended up having to take it off and we drove to Thunder Bay. And in the drive, that's when I kind of was like, oh, no. It was like two hours after that and the adrenaline was wearing off. And I was kind of like, I'm in pain. Oh, my God. Ew. I was also 10, <laughs> laying down in the back seat, like, oh mom. <laughs> it was bad. Going to Thunder Bay. Going to Thunder Bay. That's and crazy. then I was in the hospital for, I think, about three weeks. Three weeks. Damn, that Something was a bad like break, huh? Yeah, it was very bad. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty bad. The doctor said that actually it was the hardest, like he had to pull it back into place. And it was the hardest bone he had to pull. If I broke it any higher, I would have like broke my growth plate or something. Yeah. So my arms would be like this. <gasps> Damn. Oh my God. Yeah. It was pretty bad. Oh, look at you now. Look at me now. You I got, got arms. Yeah, you got arms. You got full use of your arms. Heck yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Grateful for my arms. That's right. You yeah. gotta be. Listen to Blurry Vision. The Do EP's it. waiting Bat, for you. It's true. Amazon Music. Click the link in the description below. Final thoughts. Are you inspired by like Five Sauce? Because you can definitely hear some Five Sauce in I your I love music. Five Sauce. Yeah. yeah. I'm, a, I'm a huge Five Seconds of Summer fan. Uh, so I actually saw them in concert uh, a few months ago. In LA? In or LA. in your small little town? No, no, no. Yeah. In LA. They didn't come, they didn't, they did not come to my small town. To Monotonka or whatever it is? No. <laughs> Monotonka? I'm calling called? that from now on. No, add a coke in. Add a coke in. Everyone always says you're like throwing a rock, add a coke can. Oh. Yeah. We'll never yeah. forget it. Apparently it means caribou bones in some language. language. Nice. I can't remember which one. Probably yeah. the sign language from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but it's, uh, I, I saw them and that was like, I they were amazing. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. I can definitely hear that inspiration though. Yeah. And especially yeah. like blind. Yeah. Blind. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. A lot of them, you know, I mean, like I said, I like to make music um, that, you know, represents the music I like to listen to. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge Five Seconds of Summer fan. So I take a lot of inspo from them sometimes. Do you want to have a band back you up? Do you see yourself as a solo artist? What is it? Um, I've always seen myself as a solo artist. I mean, I've been reached out by a few people to get put in a boy band, but, uh, I've always felt like doing the solo thing was more me, and uh, I'm sure I'll have a band on stage with yeah. me. Yeah, I'm having, a, you know, I'm having a release party for my EP next week. You guys are invited. Oh, you totally come. Cool. On twentieth, it's my birthday on the twentieth. Actually, we're having it on the twentieth. Dan will be there. <laughs> I, I may, I'll probably be there. I'll right, okay, okay. I'll you're, be there. you're invited. So. Thank you. Yeah, but uh, no, I'm definitely gonna have a band when I, uh, you know, don't go on tour one day. Hopefully. What is it? Have you like? Played with a band? I have not, no. So I played my first show last year in Toronto, um, and I had my really good buddy Dylan, who's worked on over half of these songs in the EP with me, fly down from L.A. to Toronto, and he played the uh, guitar with me. Oh, sick. On the show, yeah, it was fun. Are you going to tour? Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, we don't have any plans of it as of right now, but that's a dream of mine, yes. Well, so maybe end of this year, beginning of next year, something like that. Well, stay in the loop on Alex Sampson. Follow his artist page on Amazon Music. There's a link in the Thank description you. below. Below. Do it. Tap it. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Thank you guys for having me. This is such, like, this is, I, I know I'm really going to be, like, geeking out. I'm going to be like, yeah, I just did Zach's thing, and I met Dan and Zach. Yeah. We're going to say we met Alex Sampson. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> what? Wait, are you single right now? I am single, yes. I am. Interesting. Very, very, very single. Are we looking for love? No. So, uh, personally for me, I mean, last year... When it comes to relationships, for me personally, I like to keep them offline, and I do like to keep them more private. I'm a private person when it comes to that because personally, I just don't think I need everybody on the internet having an opinion on my relationship. Um, so could I apply that to you and Jordy and say that you weren't together? Uh, yes, you can. So never together? I, you're, you're throwing me in a loop here, Zach. Uh, I mean. No, <laughs> we weren't together. Got it. 
Because you were public online. So I'm just, you know, yeah. taking this principle. I am applying it. We were I, public online. Well, not you posted together online. We did post together. Yeah, no, we, uh, but I mean, that comes with anybody that you post with. Totally. Yeah. But yeah. no, I, I am very single. I was, I was in a relationship last year, you know, it was obviously not anymore. Um, but for me personally, I'm taking 2024 to just focus on myself and just do my music thing. Healthy. Yeah. Take all your experiences and build an album. I will. Yeah. I will. That's, I mean, that's what this EP is about. Yeah. A bunch Fuck of experiences yeah. into the album. Well, listen to it. Blurry Vision waiting for you on Amazon Music. Click the yeah. link in the description below. You good? Yeah, good? I remember we did an interview a while ago and we mentioned his name and they made us take his name out of the interview. You remember that? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, I'm yeah. not going to say any names because I don't want to take anything else hey, out. Hey, no, but. you're good. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah we brought your you're name fine, up. You're, 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 you're and good. they're like, yeah, we're going we're gonna to snip that. And I was like, wow. Hmm, interesting. Wow. Yeah, interesting. Wow, I have a word. I don't know what camera I was going to be like. I have a bone to pick with someone. No, I'm kidding. That one right there? That one right there. <laughs> Listen here. No, I'm joking. Um, thank you for having me. <laughs> of course. Thank you for coming. Yeah, man. Anytime. Yeah. Door and a couch uh, always here. Door is open. Couch is here. <laughs> I'm I'm Zach. Jesus. I'm Dan. Yeah, and I don't know anything. <laughs> Wait, uh, one last question. Does the work on the debut album begin now? Or are we focused um, on these six songs? Right now, we're just focused on the six songs. Um, but we're definitely going to be working on a project after, shortly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, a tour comes with it. Giddy up, Blurry Vision, and all of Alex Samson's music is on Amazon Music. Go it's true. click and Go listen away. Go tonight. That. <laughs> Do that. I really appreciate you, man. Dude, I appreciate you too. Thank you guys for having me. Nice meeting you and hanging meeting out. You too, yeah. Hi, Thank Alex. you for the water. Yeah, well, that, uh, there's yeah. snacks in your green room right I know, there. I saw that. I didn't even see it until like five minutes sitting there. I was like, wait, cool. No, I was gonna, yeah. Magic kids, thank you. Yeah, we have, yeah, we give more than just water. No, I know, no, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, we got these new blue water bottles. This yeah, year. dude, Wait. I saw this. I was like drinking yeah. this. I'm like, I feel like I shouldn't be drinking water out of this. I know, isn't it? Aren't they nice? Yeah. Well, dude, glass. this is honestly the best water I've ever had. Yeah. yeah. Don't show the logo. They don't. Pay oh yeah, don't look. It's, yeah. it's not on the back. Don't worry. Yeah, the glass is good for the environment. Don't worry. The glass is good for the environment. Yeah. Any who's Alex Sampson. Appreciate Anywho's. you, man. Yeah. Appreciate you guys too. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate you. Uh, blurry vision waiting for you. It's waiting. Thanks. Go man. stream it now. Woosh. Woo. Yeah.